Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again, my YouTube channel. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about some dear friends of mine. It won't be an entirely impartial view because I love these guys, um, and I have, full disclosure, I have worked with them before. I'm talking about the band Foxy Shazam, and a few people in these comments in this very channel have uh, asked me to talk about them. Um, so I didn't know where to start, really. I thought I would probably just look at one of their mo most recent releases, um, and react to that in the context of my experience of them and uh, let you know what I think. Justin Hawkins writes again, again. Um, I first met Eric Nally, who's the singer of Foxy Shazam, um, at the Meatloaf writing camp. And uh, I think there was a few... More established songwriters. The man from 6AM was in there, the lead singer. Uh, Rick Brant Brantley was there, um, who's a brilliant Nashville singer-songwriter bloke. Loads of really cool people who knew knew how to write songs and stuff, and I, I kind of knew who half of them were. And then I saw Eric walk in, and I, I actually... Um, and I had just started watching some footage of Foxy Shazam at a festival. It might have been Rocklahoma or something like that, one of those sort of middle american um, music festivals and the performance was preposterous anyway i saw this video of uh, eric nally and foxy shazam performing the music was was like this sort of serene almost gospely stuff and then he was performing a really intense vocal side on which i hadn't seen before um i don't know i just thought he was uh, an interesting person i recognized him as soon as he walked in and then when they said okay it'd be great if you guys want to pair off what, what do you want to do and i just pointed at eric and said i want to work with you and he went, yeah, okay, cool. And then uh, we made some songs for Meatloaf. And that was the beginning of a brilliant friendship. I've I've probably seen Foxy Shazam play about 100 times. I love this band. Um, I love a lot of their music. And I think they've been really unlucky as well. So let's, let's watch their newest um, video. And then we can uh, figure out what's going right and what's going wrong from a place of ador adoration. Foxy always makes the effort with their um, videos as well. This, this is this seems pretty cinematic, even in the opening exchanges. Let me just uh, read you some facts about the the legend of Foxy Shazam before the song starts. Foxy Shazam are from Cincinnati, Ohio, and they formed in 2004. Um, they've had seven albums so far. In 2008, they were named as one of the 100 bands you need to know by Alternative Press, which led to the band earning their spots on tours with bands such as The Darkness. We did tour with them. Uh, the Strokes, they did tour with them. Hole, uh, Deer Hunter, Panic at the Disco. I didn't know they went with, out with Deer Hunter. I love that band. In 2010, their single Unstoppable was used in the Super Bowl uh, telecast as background music for the first half highlight. That's amazing, isn't it? And Eric, you might recognise him from uh, that, you know, that Macklemore song, Downtown. He sang, a, he sang the, uh, he was the sort of guest vocalist on that. I think the Foxy Shazam story is one of missed opportunities and um, I hate to say it, but possibly, possibly even, I don't know. I don't want to throw anybody under any buses, but I think there's something about Foxy Shazam where you've got a vocalist there who is totally different to anybody else. He's, he sings in a really high range with a really distinctive timbre. The, the way he says stuff is different to everybody else. He can dance. He can act. He's the triple threat. He, he's really good looking as well. I find him super attractive. <coughs> and um, not that this is informed by that. But um, I don't know, just a, a really special character as a front person. And then every other person in the band performs with so much intensity. It's actually quite a lot to take in when you see them live that you've got like the the keyboard player has an enormous beard which is that's a lot for a lot of keyboard players that's all you need they'll just have a really long beard and they'll just stand there but he does a lot of stuff like uh, surfing on his keyboard and he, i don't know it's hard to it's hard to explain what a foxy shazam concert looks like unless my producer would like to cut in a little bit of footage here you'll see some stuff that will blow your mind
They all do daft stuff all the time. It's super intense. And you can do a lot worse than going to see Foxy Shazam on a, on a night out. I know that Eric's been stabbed on stage before. He's electrocuted himself. He climbs up everything. And they all do that kind of stuff. They're just brilliant. Um, been for a few lineup changes, mostly in the uh, rhythm section area, which is what you'd expect, really. That's the most volatile part of any rock band, isn't it? The, the engine room. And you're going to find a band that's been around as long as Foxy and had as many albums as they have. They will have had changes in that area. Sorry, let's watch this. Let's watch this. I haven't, I haven't even played it yet. So. Dancing with my demons. Try to conceal my boner. <laughs> okay, so this <laughs> first line is dancing with my demons, trying to conceal my boner. I mean, we've all been there. So he's got demons and screaming, which reminds me of the screaming demon. That was, uh, if you'd like to, if my producer would like to uh, superimpose into here, the screaming demon wah-wah pedal, which uh, was the, uh, I think it was a Morley wah-wah pedal that was um, designed or co-designed or designed to the specifications of one Mr. Stephen Vai, the screaming demon. Thanks. Don't stop When you look at Eric in these, uh, this stuff, you can really see that, um, uh, what's his name from the, uh, Anthony Kiedis from the Red Hot Chili Peppers has really adopted his um, hairstyle and, I don't know, elements of his aesthetic. By co pure coincidence, nobody's suggesting anything. I'm really pleased I wore my cowboy shirt though. It looks like this is cowboy themed. <laughs> See, he's a great performer, even when he's like, I'm not just talking about his singing, like the way he, um, the camera loves Eric Nelly, that's the reality. And I think um, he could be an actor, he could, uh, he could thrive in any of the arts, I think. He's a great painter as well. It's, uh, I kind of love him, I love him. There, I said it, that's it, that's it, it's out. I've said it many times there. <laughs> He's um, riding a bull. Um, you could argue that in this scene he's taking the bull by the horns. It's a metaphor, uh, but it really happened. That is a really interesting painting. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's, uh, that's me taking the bull by the horns. That's how I handle my business. It's a metaphor. I get it. But that actually happened, though. Maybe she will. Maybe she won't. I really love anything that has homoeroticism and cowboy stuff. I just love it. I don't know what that is. Um, I will have to do something about Orville Peck at some point because he's the current master of it. But this is up the same alley or along the same bridle path. Uh, I'm not sure if that applies to American horse riding. It's more of an English thing. How's everybody doing today? Thanks for coming out. He's got, he's got a, a, a handkerchief hanging out of one pocket. And, uh, and I seem to remember that that's something to do, that's prison code for something. I'm not sure which pocket. One of the pockets means into fisting, and the other one I not, just means librarian or something. I don't know. Actually, I haven't done a lot of time, I'll be honest. Um, and it might be different in America, as I said before. <laughs> So even after seven, eight albums, they're still making stuff like that, which is just really fun to watch and interesting to listen to. It doesn't pander to its audience. It's not trying to, it doesn't change what it, what's in its core to be successful, but it works really hard for its people, you know, for us. I do feel like when I was working with them, it was always a constant battle uh, between like a perhaps label, partner that, that maybe didn't I mean it's who nobody really understands what Foxy is I think even the people around them and even Foxy perhaps themselves don't realise what their what their place is I think they have the potential to be like a mega cult band they've got a singer who has 
the gifts that you need to actually break through and and, and become huge, you know, and, and actually change pop and rock in, in one fell swoop. Um, but it hasn't happened for them. And they've been around for a long time now. They're, it's one of those bands that everybody probably is aware of. Um, but they don't ha they haven't had the trajectory that I think they deserve, you know. The music's really interesting. But it is they've got this weird combination of of true ambition where they want to change the world with their music. Um but then the authenticity to keep it about you know, the songs are to all intents and purposes, they're about matters of the heart and about trying to be a father with no money but pursuing your dream. I really think he's a proper bluesman in terms of the way he writes he writes his lyrics, you know. And they're totally from the heart, and they are for real. I know these guys; they they mean what they they mean what they're saying, um, and they perform it in such an intense way. It's almost like what you'd expect a cardiac gig to look like, um, in that it's nuts. You know, I think that's they probably walk the same line that, that the darkness does in the sense that you don't know, you don't always know whether they're serious or not, and sometimes they don't know either. But that's the kind of thing I love, you know. And all they needed was one huge song to just take over. And they never quite had it. Or they did and it didn't just didn't work for them. I can never understand why. I think there's always people like Eric who are genuine creative mavericks um, and really on the edge, uh, possibly of sanity as well. They make people nervous because they're, I don't know, it's hard to market something that's completely real and completely different to everything else. He's really a unique individual performer um, and artist and he deserves better I thought he was going to you know maximise on, on the exposure that the Macklemore moment gave him because when he sang Downtown and had a huge hit they were very that was a great that was a great moment for him to sort of hit back in a short time after that with his solo career or another Foxy record. I mean, no, Foxy have been on hiatus for a while since uh, they they had been on hi hiatus for a while anyway. Um, but there was a moment in time there where he really he had the world's attention and he didn't do anything with it. He just he waited too long, I think, for one reason or another. And then Foxy reformed. Everybody was like, "Yes, Foxy's reforming." Then COVID happened. It's just awful timing. I mean, obviously the pandemic's awful for everybody, but I think for Foxy Shazam, it was. Uh, I would say it was catastrophic because it, it it made a really exciting reunion. It stopped it from getting off the ground at all, really, because this is a band that needs to be seen live, really. If you, and in a world where you can't tour, it's really difficult to hit back. So they've been so, they've been really unlucky. I think you need to get behind Foxy Shazam and support them, allow them to transcend the uh, the boundaries that have held them back at all these all these years. They deserve better. Um, and you can go and watch them live, listen to their records. You'll love it, honestly. Um, because the person, or rather, the yeah, the person who is bored with Foxy Shazam is bored with life. Justin Hawkins writes again. Again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, watch one of these two videos. Nice one, guys. See you on the ice.